She was the first celebrity to be publicly humiliated in the history of the British aristocracy. More than 80 lovers followed her. She died alone in her old age. When the scandal broke, her husband brought legal action against her. This took her from being a beautiful duchess to a scandalous queen who was reviled by everyone. She was Margaret, the wife of the Duke of Argyle, a famous English aristocrat. 16 years ago, the young and beautiful Margaret was in the news. She was the subject of much media attention. And that's when she met the Duke on a train. Margaret had many male friends, but Duke Campbell had more experience than she did. Although they both had families of their own at this time, still, they couldn't stop themselves from flirting with each other. You have a delicious little smell. It's never been called that before. Such is the efficiency of grown up relationships. Campbell invited Margaret to visit his castle. The sun shone through the glass room and fell on Margaret's face. She wandered around the castle, admiring the dilapidated but old rooms. Everything was there for him to see. She was overjoyed. Margaret had a feeling at that moment that she would be the mistress of the castle. After leaving the castle, Marguerite signed a divorce agreement with her husband. She was single again. Her friends threw her a party to celebrate. After another night of partying, Margaret was in the bath. She hears the news on the radio. The old duke had died. Campbell had succeeded to the throne as the new duke. Margaret immediately called to congratulate him. The two of them then took a cruise around the lagoon outside the castle to relax. Campbell also introduced Margaret to the family treasures that lie at the bottom of the lake. Shipwreck full of jewels. It's like finding the El Dorado. Margaret looked at the man in front of her. She was even more convinced of her choice. The two soon fell in love. That's when Campbell pulled out the ring and threw it at Margaret. Yes. Be my duchess. Margaret's affirmative answer almost came out of her mouth. But she calmed down. She made the Duke promise to her before putting on the ring. Then yes. And so began their sweet time together. They made a public display of affection. This succeeded in forcing Campbell's current wife to file for divorce. Margaret finally got her wish to marry Campbell and become the Duchess. But little did she know that she was stepping into the deep end. She is a Duchess of high status. The servants line up to welcome the Duke and his wife. The Duke lifts her up in his arms. They walked into the castle to the celebration of everyone. I'm sorry, but I just, I don't like it. I'm not going to put you down. You're going to drop me. I'm not going to fucking drop you. Could you please put me down? After an argument, Campbell's face changed instantly. There, you're down. Happy? He then walked into the castle, leaving Margaret alone and embarrassed in front of the servants. But this was only the beginning. The Duchess wakes up in the castle. She admired the big diamond ring on her finger. She oversees the restoration of the castle. In the evening she hired an artist to paint her portrait. Late at night the Duke locks himself in his study. He ignored Marguerite's knocks at the door. He just concentrated on her specimens. First she dazed the butterfly in the bottle. Then she nailed it to the drawing board. As if Marguerite was already in the palm of her hand. Marguerite returns to her room. She wrote the word lonely in her diary. Then, while tidying her room, she found the Duke's secret in a pile of bills. The Duke was a mere figurehead. His fortune had been squandered. He hadn't even paid for the repairs to the castle or the salvage of the wreck. When Marguerite asked him about it, he slumped back into his sofa, for he knew his wife was a rich girl. She would help him pay off his debts, and that's why Campbell married her. Here's the thought, Margaret. Pay the b b b bills It's what you're for. The next day, Campbell apologized for his drunken vow yesterday, and Margaret did not disappoint. She had the castle restored at great expense and invited many guests to see it. But she didn't expect her husband to invite his ex-wife. Why don't you get yourself outside a glass of champagne and poke around and then cast a beady up These words displeased Marguerite. She now knew that the decision to stay in the castle all these years later was decided by her ex-wife. Later, when I die, my son will be due. That will also be out to my son. Could there be a worse duchess than her? The castle she had spent so much money on restoring. 
but had nothing to do with, and left to her ex-wife's son. Marguerite can't accept that she is being used as a dowry for someone else. Margaret, don't push her in the lake or anything. Of course I won't. She finds letters from her ex-wife Louise, cuts and pastes them together to create a new one. She then copied her handwriting. She then sends the letters to Campbell. When Campbell opened the envelope, Marguerite held her breath in anticipation. I love you so much. I'm so happy my sons are yours, not Ian's. Your own, Louise. She asks, pretending not to know. What is it? Campbell is clearly confused at this point. Margaret read the letter, but easily said it must be someone's fault. But as Campbell looked at Louis's handwriting, he had to start wondering if his son was his own. He confronts Louis. You don't deserve them, but you are their father. You piece of absolute shit. Campbell's doubts were not completely dispelled. He sent someone to investigate in secret and discovered his ex-wife had never been to the hotel on the letterhead. That route was a dead end. So Margaret takes another route. She asks the doctor if she can still have a baby. But the doctor's answer was no, because she had suffered a serious fall. Her spine could not support her in pregnancy and childbirth, but in order to succeed in inheriting the castle, she had to call her girlfriends for a secret discussion. I need you to buy me a baby boy. What? A newborn baby boy. 